All right, well, good uh, Thursday morning, all. I am uh, heading out for a work commute today. I'm gonna take the Riker, and uh, I installed the passenger seat accessory, folding backrest, and of course the foot pegs. Uh, yesterday, I guess it was. Anyway, um, I'll do a review on those and the pain in the butt that it was to install it uh, at a later date, but we'll suffice to say that getting this side on here, uh, this right foot peg with the uh, pannier mount uh, was a real chore. Uh, they're almost mutually exclusive on their space, uh, so you have to take about 10 tries at uh, maneuvering the a little uh, Allen head screws in there and trying to get everything tightened up and lined up and it's just <laughs> it was a pain anyway got it all on there got it tightened up uh, a short review is the uh, the foot pegs at least the ones I got suck uh, they're very loose and they rattle and make lots and lots of noise uh, there's like about I don't know maybe half or three-quarter inch of slack at the top and they just bounce around so if you don't have somebody on there or they're not folded in their down position they just make a heck of a racket uh, so anyway, I'm loaded up a little heavier today. Uh, got my work stuff in here, but I'm taking a bunch of the uh, GoPro camera gear. I've got my uh, Karma drone here, and uh, the client site that I'm headed to today has a big open field in their industrial complex, and I'm going to get a little bit of practice uh, flying the Karma. I'm still a newbie with drones. I have no idea what I'm doing other than basic controls, but uh, anyway... I'm going to get a little practice flying that today, hopefully, and maybe, if uh, space and time permits, I'll take that with me on the trip up to Springfield, Missouri for the uh, Spider Fest. So, anyway, and having this all strapped on here uh, <laughs> gives me a neat way to hang onto those foot pegs so they don't rattle. Oh, it's going to drive me nuts. Uh, da -da -da -da, gate opener. Here we go. I'm recording in 4K uh, today. It makes my editing a whole lot more arduous because even though I've got a fairly fast PC for my editing and a f good video card, it still says that I don't meet the, whatever it is, the HVEC standard for 265, uh, H265 video, and it won't display it in uh, GoPro Quick. Um, it just says that my machine is not supported, not fast enough. Uh, but I can bring up all that footage in uh, Adobe Premiere just fine. Uh, playback is a little hitchy, but it works. Uh, the real problem is I can't do my gauges uh, for the GoPro uh, speed and all that. Uh, you can only get that through the quick application, and if you can't run your video through quick to export to get the gauges, then you don't get your gauges. So I'm going to have to sort that out. Maybe get a uh, slightly faster PC or something. It's pretty beefy already. I don't understand why it's not uh, supported. I put the CRG uh, EXO, uh, XO, whatever, uh, lane splitters on it this time. I'll show a quick view of those. Um, they're the ones that have the open back, uh, so it's got that kind of texture. I thought that might look good with the herringbone pattern on the uh, on the Riker, you know, the seat and everything. Uh, so instead of having the smooth back like the other ones, it's got that open, uh, extruded look. Anywho, I definitely like these uh, CRGs a whole lot better than uh, the OEM mirrors on just about any bike. So I did get a chance to try out or experience uh, riding with a pillion last night. My daughter wanted to ride. Uh, the main reason I got the seat was so I could take her out for rides occasionally. And also for my trip to Spiderfest, I need a better way to mount a, a bag on the back. So this gives me that option. Um, anyway, the Riker definitely handles a lot differently with uh, you know, 80 pound or 100 pound pillion on the back. Uh, it's a, a marked difference in handling. Uh, when you have the foot pegs down, it engages the uh, passenger mode. And that turns off sport and rally and any of the other fun modes. Uh, it leaves you in normal. I think you could still go to eco if you wanted to. 
but it definitely puts you uh, in normal mode. And you can try to engage sport, and it'll stay there for a couple of seconds, and then it'll say sport mode off, and it'll flash the little uh, passenger icon. So it's telling you, nope, can't do that. Not when you're holding this one, buddy. dialed in where I want them. It's getting better. Ah, that's better. I'll take care of that right side one in a minute. Okay, if you really want it, you can have it. Our weather is absolutely gorgeous today. Uh, our forecast was crap weather for last night and today, but you know we got lucky. We dodged a bullet uh, here in the Houston area. Uh, Dallas and some of the areas further north uh, in Texas were not so lucky. North and east, uh, they really got hammered. Uh, apparently last night in Dallas they had, uh, or yesterday through the day, Dallas, whatever, they had up to nine inches of rain in some spots in a day. Nine inches of rain in one day. Man, that's epic. That is biblical flood kind of proportions there, man. That's crazy. It's like when we get tropical depressions down here. Uh, anyway, so there, there was a lot of flooding, a lot of damage up there. Uh, a few tornadoes touching down here and there. Uh, a few people died, unfortunately, in flooding accidents. Uh, it's, it's terrible. Um, and then that same system just marched on through uh, eastern, northeastern Texas and on into uh, Louisiana and other states and apparently it is still kicking butts and taking names so thoughts and prayers are with all those people but lucky us we get uh, very nice weather and uh, we're set up in a high pressure system right now that is supposed to keep us clear and dry and sunny and nice for about a week so that's great hopefully it'll carry on through to my uh, trip to uh, st louis or sorry springfield not st louis preparing for a big trip is always uh it's always a task. Uh, I'm a list kind of guy, so I make packing lists and uh, you know checklists of things to go through, so I don't lose out or miss anything that I need. Uh, so right now is list time. I have several that I draw on from previous similar jobs or similar experiences, so I just kind of adapt it and uh, add or remove stuff from the list as necessary. Gives me a good starting point. Um, I ordered some more uh, camera gear, not a lot, just a, a couple of little minor things. Ordered some more batteries for the Hero 7s, and the microphone adapters came back in stock, at least as far as uh, GoPro's online store says. So they're back in stock, and they're $49.99, just like always, not the $129, 150 170 that you're finding on Amazon and places like that. That's nuts. Um, so I ordered uh, three of them. I need one for another helmet, and I wouldn't mind having a couple spares for my camera rigs and stuff like that. So uh, three of those should be on the way for tomorrow or, uh, or sorry, Saturday or Monday. Then uh, I decided to splurge, and I got something that I've been looking at for a while. Uh, don't know how well it's going to turn out. If I don't like it, I'll just send it back, I guess. But I picked up the Zoom H. 3VR is what it's called. H3-VR. Anyway, it's a 3D ambisonics uh, audio recorder for 360 video. And it comes with a neat little mounting adapter that allows you to uh, Siamese uh, parallel mount with a Fusion 360 or other 360 camera uh, off of a single tripod mount. So I'll be taking that up to uh, the Spider Fest with me and I'll have a uh, 
tripod set up, you know, in camp or whatever, and I'll just set it on uh, record and let it go. And so we'll have uh, 360 video with uh, 360 audio to go with it. That's my only complaint so far about that Fusion 360 camera is the audio is kind of weak. It's very washed out and you don't get very good, uh, it's just not good sonic quality. It sounds muffled, kind of like you're in a trash can. So uh, an external audio solution will be pretty cool for that. Now, of course, that's not ruggedized and action ready, so I can't have that on the bike in motion or anything like that, uh, that little recorder. So uh, that's just going to be stationary mount kind of stuff. But as far as on bike, I am going to get off my keister and start working on a couple of little adapter plates because I'm getting down to the wire now in four days, five days. Uh, I'm going to try to make a little sandwich mount that will fit underneath this passenger seat uh, against the max mount. Maybe lock into that little tab back there or something uh, to be a support for a camera pole. And I'm going to find a camera pole that I can use. All I really need is a probably about a three foot tall, maybe three and a half feet, uh, aluminum pole of some kind. Uh, I could go fancy like carbon fiber or you know fiberglass or whatever. Uh, I just need it to have a standard quarter inch thread on the top for a tripod mount. I'll run a GoPro tripod mount adapter into the top of that guy and epoxy it in place so it doesn't back out or get funny on me on the road, that would suck. Uh, and then I'll mount the GoPro on top of that. Now the base of the mount uh, will have to tie into the plate somehow, and then I'll have a strap, uh, you know, a heavy duty Velcro strap or a rock strap or something that kind of secures the pole itself to the backrest as well. So it'll give it a little bit of uh, lateral as well as uh, you know front back stability. That way the camera's not just pogoing around uh, with bumps on the road. But anyway, the height, I want it to be just a little higher than my head, uh, maybe give about a 15 or 20 degree down angle above me, uh, so you can kind of see the front of the bike a little bit, and it'll be one of those uh, invisible cameraman kind of mounts where it's just a floating 360 video uh, above the rider's position, the third person view. So that ought to be cool. And I'll do this, I'll reuse that same mount, figure out how to adapt it to uh, my other bikes. Make a, a rear seat mount for it, or uh, on the cub, I could tie it up to that rear rack or whatever. Figure it out. The 360 camera gives a lot of interesting advantages uh, with GoPro's name uh, of it is called Over Capture. Uh, other brands have got their name for it, but essentially, what you're doing is you're taking a spherical video and you're reframing just the part that you want so you can steer it in real time in your post editing and figure out what you want to show uh, so that reframing you're pulling out a 1080p uh, you know 1080 30 frame i guess whatever uh, out of that 4k or 5.2k video so you're just steering and getting a 1080p frame that you want but it allows you to move the camera around at any time through the recording and you can re-export and reframe that shot as many times as you want to get the the angles that you want so it's pretty cool you don't really have to think about where the camera is pointing anymore you just turn it on and let it record and then you go back later and pick out what you want. So that'll be interesting to play with. The downside to that uh, over capture thing is uh, the best way to get it out right now is the mobile app for iOS. Um, you got to have an iOS device with the GoPro quick application on there and it allows you to get what you want out of it a little easier. The Android app, I don't think it works quite as well. I've had a lot of problems with it already. Um, and then of course the desktop version just pretty much blows. It's not very good at all. Uh, it constantly locks up. It hates Windows 10, yet they require you to be on Windows 10 to run it. So, okay, well, make up your mind. If you're gonna force people to be on 10, then make an application that works, please. So, yeah, it's just buggy and kludgy. I'm not a fan. But for right now, that's the only way to get the gauges out and the only way to do over capture and some of the other uh, 
the other tricks. There is a Fusion 360 desktop app uh, that tends to work a little bit better than Quick, but it's only for the Fusion 360. It doesn't work for any of the other cameras, and uh, it's you can do over capture, but you can't do the dynamic steering. From what I've found, uh, you can reframe a given spot, but you can't reframe it. Uh, in real time, you can't steer it around at multiple points in that video. You point it at what you want, and then that's what you export. And that sucks. I like GoPro, and I think they've got uh, neat cameras, but they certainly have some issues that they need to pour some R&D money into to fix. They've got plenty of money. They're not hurting. So they need to step up their game a little bit. The hardware is neat. It's pretty stable for the most part, minus a few glitches and lockups and bugs and that sort of thing. But man, the software is their Achilles heel. It's terrible. I 
thinking about the trip here. I have got 922 miles on this oil, so I've got 1399, so 1400 miles on it right now. My next oil change interval is 3500. Yeah, I'll be uh, within that. I need to uh, learn the oil check procedure on this thing. Uh, long highway runs, if it's uh, using or losing any oil, I need to make sure that I'm covered there. Check it about every four or five hundred miles on the trip. These are a little different on the oil check routine than most vehicles because they have a dry sump. So you got to get it up to operating temperature, run it, circulate it, and then shut it down. And you have to, I think it's, it's very specific, you wait 30 seconds or one minute or something, and then you check the oil level. Uh, and you have to do it within a couple of minutes of shutting it down or the reading isn't going to be correct uh, because too much will settle out and it's not going to show you the right level. It appears to have more than it really does or something like that. I've had dry sumps on uh, race cars and stuff in the past, but those are big you know, automotive engines, so I haven't, haven't messed with one of these motors before. jockeyed around side to side left to right yeah, the alignment did help uh, you know it doesn't have the constant pull to the right but it really does hunt around on the road a lot I was talking to the guys at the shop uh, about you know some of my Riker issues and uh, one of the parts guys uh, said right off the top of his head it's uh, a tire tread issue and I you know, I've had that posture since the beginning. I think it's something with these all-tread, all-season tires, whatever. Uh, they're just a little off. I don't think they suit the uh, geometry of this bike very well. Uh, he said uh, whenever it comes up to tire replacement time, replace them with the standard rally tires, the non-rally, uh, you know, the, the regular street variety tire, uh, and it'll track a lot better on the front. And that's kind of what they're what the consensus about this problem is. Uh, it doesn't fix all of it, but it helps. Uh, then the odd man out on that is going to be the rear tire because it's a different size. It's a 15 versus a 16, so it's not the same tire uh, as what the uh, non-rally versions have. Anyway, uh, when I had my alignment done, James Thorne said that this rear tire size is pretty common, and he has Yokohamas and other... Uh, performance oriented tires that should fit it, so that's fine. I'll just go that route. Again, it's uh, it's just problematic because the sizes on the Riker are somewhat proprietary right now. There are not a lot of other uh, bikes on the market that have this particular layout or you know this particular size. They're not they're automotive in nature, uh, just by the carcass design and, you know, shape and everything. They're very much automotive, even though they're MC rated. They're, they, these are automotive style tires. Uh, and there just aren't any uh, direct fit replacements uh, out of the automotive world yet. Uh, at least from the research that I've done and the consensus in a lot of the forums, people are just saying, yeah, it's, not a lot of choice right now. I 
I'm sure eventually there'll be more tires available and uh, might uh, might have some entrepreneuring souls out there that decide to uh, make a spacer kit for the front fenders or something like that to give a little bit more clearance. Uh, that would be okay for overall diameter, but it's not going to help too much uh, because these wrap around. They're not just half fender, so the more you raise it up, it's going to get closer somewhere else. Uh, and you can't do anything about the width because you, know, you got what you got. That's it. So they're going to have to be the same width and pretty close to the same uh, overall diameter. The rear tire on this one is a similar situation. It's probably the same on the non-rally. Uh, there's not much clearance back there to the fenders. So you can't go too much wider and you can't go too much uh, larger overall. things on my to-do list before I head out on that trip and this is one of them right here I got to sort out this uh, remote issue that I've been fighting since day one uh, I don't know how to address that uh, the problem with it is uh, it works about half of the time and it'll allow you to start and stop the cameras but you can't uh, shut it down so it runs its own battery out so I'll uh, probably unpair it from my other cameras, uh, the one I'm recording on and maybe the one that I use on the chest rig, and I'll just pair it up to the Fusion 360 uh, because I can't physically reach it if it's mounted behind me. So uh, that'll allow me to start stop that thing while I'm riding.
practical experience in piloting and we were playing with them, so it's going to be a big learning curve there. shut this one down uh, these 4k files get real big real fast and they uh, chew a whole lot of battery so I'm gonna shut this down and I will rejoin you all uh, a little later hopefully uh, flying the drone a little bit